It's Wednesday, and it's the peak of the forecast period as far as temperatures are concerned, and maybe for conditions if the warmth is your thing. We've got some fall-like conditions to follow a stormy day tomorrow. I'll update your forecast in more detail, of course, before I leave you for yet a, another beautiful evening in the neighborhood. Without a doubt, our top story tonight will be the millions of dollars that came, as I alluded to in closing last evening, as I started to get word of it happening. The Tiger Grant, which has been awarded to the state and thus to McGoffa County in some respects in regards to the Restaurant Row widening project of the Mountain Parkway. Stay tuned to find out everything I've been able to learn about the project, when it is expected to be done, when right-of-way acquisitions are expected to take place, and every other detail that we could gather before airtime. That, of course, our top story this evening, but not our only story. We've got calendar announcements and much more to get to in just a few moments, and a few things from around the state that, well, they hit close to the viewing area and home as well. We'll start off with a release from the United States Attorney's Eastern District of Kentucky office where a federal judge has today sentenced a former Pikeville pharmacy manager to 72 months in prison for her role in a conspiracy to illegally distribute thousands of prescription pills across eastern Kentucky and elsewhere. U.S. District Judge Amul Tapar sentenced 60-year-old Beverly Lockhart who worked at multiple Pikeville pharmacies for conspiracy to distribute oxycodone and under federal law, of course, she'll have to serve at least 85% of her sins. According to evidence that was presented during her trial earlier this year, Lockhart conspired with several co-defendants from June of 06 through July of 2011 to illegally dispense prescription drugs to eastern Kentuckians. Lockhart's co-defendants include two doctors, the corporation which owns the pharmacy where Lockhart worked, another pharmacy employee, and six street-level dealers, all who obtained their pills from the pharmacies where Lockhart was employed. Dr. Linda Roos, who practiced medicine in Houston, Texas, was sentenced to 72 months back in December of last year for her role and has permanently surrendered her license to practice medicine. All 11 defendants have now been sentenced in that case. While sentencing for the former mayor of the city of Martin, 69-year-old Ruth Robinson is set for a few weeks later on next month. Her husband and stepson, 69-year-old James Red Robinson and 32-year-old James Stephen Robinson, who were convicted of civil rights violations as well as vote fraud, were both set to be sentenced earlier today as it pertains to charges that stem from the 2012 election in November of that year, the general election in which Martin was seeking real, excuse me, in which Robinson was seeking re-election as the mayor of Martin. The younger, Steve Robinson, was sentenced to 21 months for civil rights and vote fraud charges. He also received a 10-month violation, rather a 10-month term for violation of his probation agreement. Those are going to run consecutively, so thus he's going to serve 31 months behind bars. As for the husband and father of the younger, James Red Robinson's sentencing was postponed. A motion was expected to have been filed on behalf of his attorney. He will be sentenced at a later date, as, of course, will Ruth Robinson, which once again is set for next month. Her daughter is going to be sentenced next month as well after she was convicted in the Social Security fraud case as well. Attorney General Jack Conway of Kentucky is urging everyone today, including the Federal Communications Commission, to allow phone companies to utilize existing call blocking technologies that would better protect consumers from unwanted phones and scams. Call blocking technologies exist, his office says, such as Nomo Robo, Call Control, and Telemarketing Guard. Those three different technologies have been developed to enable phone carriers to identify and block unwelcome sales calls at their customer's request. However, some phone carriers, he says, have not implemented this technology in part because of their belief that federal law prevents carriers from blocking certain calls on their customer's behalf. In a letter signed by 38 other state and territorial attorneys general, Conway has filed official comments with the FCC today. The letter formally requests an opinion with the FCC regarding phone companies' legal ability to implement call blocking technology. Some phone carriers have expressed concern that the FCC's legal framework prohibits phone companies from determining which calls should be allowed to go through to a customer and which should be blocked. Conway is encouraging everyone in the Commonwealth to sign up for Kentucky's no-call list, which you can do and have been able to do now for quite some time. It does, he says, help deter unwanted and fraudulent calls and text messages. It's as simple as logging on to nocall.ky.gov, N-O-C-A-L-L.ky.gov. 
Consumers who are registered on the no-call list and receive an unwanted call can also go back to that website to file a complaint, of which well more than 1,300 people have done to date. A pause for just a few moments. When we come back, we'll talk about the TIGER grant, what TIGER stands for, but more importantly, what the $24 million means to Restaurant Row, McGoffin County, and everyone who travels through it. Stay tuned. It's an ages-old battle that rages on. Apple or pumpkin? And now you can decide which pie makes the best blizzard treat. Taste them both for a limited time at your Sagersville DQ, home of the three-buck breakfast and the five-buck lunch, and where breakfast is served hot Monday through Thursday, 6 to 11, and Friday, Saturday, and Sunday until noon, and where everything else is served all day, every day. Your Sagersville Dairy Queen. To anyone else, it might just be Thursday, but around here, it's Dipper Day at your Sagers Elise, where a plate full of big, white chunks of crispy chicken, two homemade sides, and a big buttery biscuit is only $4.99, and only $4.29 after 4 o'clock. So for lunch, a night free from the kitchen, or to cater your next big family or business gathering, call your Sagersville Lee's famous recipe. Sagersville National lets you go mobile with their new banking app. That's right, you can view your account and balance, transfer money, pay bills, and yes, deposit checks right from your phone from wherever you are. Just download the Sagersville National Bank app on your Android, iPad, iPhone, or other device. Any phone that can connect to the internet has the capability, and you can start saving time and money today with Sagersville National Bank's new mobile app. Wherever you are, we're there for you at Sagersville National Bank. At the end of every race, Mark Martin hangs up his driving gloves. Ow. He hangs up his fire suit. Whoa. And he hangs up his helmet. Whoa. Which is why he picks up his phone and opens the ER Extra app. The app shows ER Extra wait times, locations, and more. It's the one safeguard Mark Martin is never without. ER Extra at Paul B. Hall Regional Medical Center. Extra fast, extra easy, extra great. Spend less time waiting or in line for your prescriptions or refills and get the care you need with the quality and convenience that matters most at Parkway Pharmacy, your exclusive provider of the finest in vitamins and supplements by Windmill Vitamins. Come in or drive through 8.30 till 6.30 Monday through Friday or call Parkway Pharmacy, 349-4400. And while you take a good look at all the cute little baby things at Frazier's Prater Drug Seasonal Shop, let me tell you about some things that you're going to want to see next week. They're having their annual fall open house, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Everything in the store is at least 20% off. Fall and Halloween, 30% off. Clear us an extra at least 10% off. And they're going to have those great little refreshments, drinks, and snacks that they always have. No reason not to stop by the seasonal shop's annual fall open house. It's Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of next week at the seasonal shop. Remember when they invented the peanut butter cup? Bringing peanut butter and chocolate together. Pure genius. Well, the Sonoman Juro has done the same thing for wireless. Right now at Appalachian Wireless, you'll find the tough, dependable Sonoman Juro. This flip phone is great for the job or weekend warrior, but you can also access the internet and take great pictures with a two megapixel camera. Get it now, the best of both worlds, just like the peanut butter cup. Appalachian Wireless, better service, bigger savings. I didn't have the official release as of airtime last evening, but in closing last night, I mentioned that we would have a follow-up today on tens of millions of dollars, specifically $24 million in grant money, which had come to a project that greatly affects McGoffin County and everyone from coast to coast traveling through our area. Representative Hal Rogers and Governor Steve Bashir have now today officially announced together funding, complete funding now, for the Sagersville segment of the Mountain Parkway 4 landing project, a segment which has been in a bit of limbo now for months and maybe even years. The Mountain Parkway 4 landing project, the first major extension and widening of the crucial transportation link to eastern Kentucky, says Rogers and Bashir. In a half century, 
received the approval of a $24 million federal Tiger grant last night that will speed construction of the crucial segment that we all call Restaurant Row here in Sagersville. Representative Rogers and Governor Bashir have been working through grant opportunities such as this Tiger grant, they tell us, as part of their combined efforts to improve Eastern Kentucky, known as the SOAR Initiative, shaping our Appalachian region. In an official statement from our governor, he says the widening and expansion of the Mountain Parkway in eastern Kentucky is much more than a transportation project. It's a transformation project for an Appalachian region that has been denied access to economic vitality because of inadequate infrastructure and limited mobility. For an official statement from Representative Rogers, he tells us that, quote, the work to improve eastern Kentucky is a marathon, but we are excited about the milestones that we continue to cross. And he says there are many more projects on the horizon that will impact other counties in our region, and this announcement builds momentum around the opportunities that are growing through the grassroots efforts of SOAR. Here locally, I spoke with McGoffa County Judge Executive Charles Harden earlier today, who agrees that, among other things, this presents some finality to the community, that there will be no bypass of Sagersville as was originally proposed, and that this particular portion of the entire $753 million or so project as was proposed by Governor Bashir to complete the four-laning of the Mountain Parkway, well, is no longer on an indefinite hold due to a lack of funds and also that they'll have to complete the entire project with basically this end and the other already done with the middle from Campton to Sagersville left to complete. As you said, until most people see it done or until most of us in public service see the funds allocated, the right of ways taken, we're never quite sure. Because if there's one thing that it's easier to do in Frankfurt and in D.C. than anything is to stop something to change something. To get it is the hard part. So when they allocate $24 million in federal money through a very competitive process, the Tiger Grant, I mean, the Big Sandy ad, Malvis, the governor, the congressman, everybody worked on this with the hope we would get it. We're not going to change and give $24 million back from the state of Kentucky to the Transportation uh, Department in D.C. This money is going to be spent. And knowing the way the federal government is, this is what they've allocated. So the $24 million is going to sort of drag everything else. Now, the governor's been committed to this project a long time, and I've never had any doubt as long as he had the say, as long as he was governor, any way he could do it, he would. But this, as you said, makes it final. This is going to happen. Too many people are involved. Too much money's been allocated. We now know that McCoughlin County is not going to be bypassed at Sagersville. The Restaurant Row project that we're talking about tonight is part of more than $100 million in total projects that will be seen here in McGoffin County in only about two years' time, I'm told. The grant for the Federal Transportation Investment Generating Economic Recovery Program, TIGER for short, will allow construction to begin two years ahead of schedule on the congested 2.4-mile segment that will extend the Mountain Parkway from its easternmost end at US 460 and Kentucky 114 here in Sagersville. Well, what's amazing about this is initially there were two proposals, $15 million to go through what we call Restaurant Row, $30 million to go around. And one of the selling points I always had was it's a lot cheaper to go through. Well, because of some marked improvements that they're making in this project, this $24 million is going to be coupled with the $15 million that was originally going to be there, and we're going to have a $39 million project through Sagersville instead of around it, when we were really hoping for a $15 million project two years ago of going through Sagersville. The other thing is the Route 7 interchange. From Route 7 to connecting up to where this restaurant row will begin there at the bridge. The bridge will actually be part of the restaurant row uh, part. That's $25 million. That's going to be lit this year to be built next year. Then when you get down to the Gifford where we want to do the interchange for economic development, there's already $26 million allocated. Now there's an additional $20 million that we need to get from Route 30 down to almost uh, at the Johnson Fork exit. But once you get $26 million up and spent on a section of road, it's much easier to go back and get the 20. So if you add the th plus, there's a 
$3 million project on Middle Fork that's dear to the Middle Fork people. That's that old dilapidated dangerous bridge there that's going to be replaced. All total, we're talking about $93 million to be spent on road improvements in McGoffin County, 90 million of that to do with things on the parkway. The parkway is not only going to be completed in McGoffin County, there's no way they're going to do it in McGoffin County and not go back and connect it up in, in Campton. So I, I mean, I want to pinch myself this morning. 24 million when the governor called me and he was ecstatic. I mean, he, this was one of those competitive grants. You just don't go get one of these grants. Uh, and the other issue that you and I have not talked about safety. Safety. We've lost too many friends, and I've lost patients on their way to specialist on this dangerous route. And we need never forget that. This is a great project in terms of money and improved structure, safety, and respect. With this influx of funds speeding the project up by two years, we're told that right-of-way acquisition is scheduled to begin by the end of this year and pre-construction work will begin next year. Construction itself is expected to be underway in the first half of 2016. Construction, I'm also told, is expected to begin later this year on the first segment of the project. That's going to be the Parkway Widening and Interchange Improvement Project at Route 7. Also, I'm told they're going to break ground on the Interchange Project later this year as well, perhaps in the next few weeks. The entire Mountain Parkway expansion, which is expected to be completed in 6 to 10 years, has an estimated price tag of about $753 million. And of course, we can only assume that that also means jobs with $100 million being spent in projects altogether in just the next couple of years here in McGoffin County. That's going to mean hopefully they're going to need some employees. Those who will be coming into the area to work will also need services such as food and gas and lodging and otherwise. And we hope it's going to be something that will have a considerable economic impact on McGoffin County in the reasonably near future. Calendar announcements and more in your weather after this. If you have been in a serious wreck, do you really think that you are in good hands of the insurance companies when you have lost wages, medical bills, and pain and suffering from your head to your toes? The answer is no. If you want to truly be in good hands, give me a call. I'm attorney Donald Wayne McFarland. Let me put my 20 years of experience in working to protect the rights of injured people to work for you. 349-9000. Save big at Premier Auto, an 02 Hyundai Sonata, only $37.50, an 07 Pontiac G5, only $39.50, and an 09 Buick LaCrosse, just $99.50, an 06 Rhino, only 1,200 miles, just $69.50, and 100 miles per gallon, no driver's license and no insurance needed. New scooters cut 500 bucks to just $9.95 at Premier Auto in Paintsville. Got company coming? Looking to visit Sagersville and family or just get away? Then come stay with us in one of two newly restored and uniquely appointed lofts over downtown, filled with history throughout. With a luxurious touch, king beds, free Wi-Fi, HD TV, and enough comfort to sleep one to ten guests, book your stay at the Mortimer Lofts by emailing to reach Sue at yahoo.com, find them on Facebook, or call 349-3299. Regardless of where you want to ride, you can be riding on a brand new Kawasaki or Polaris for less at M&M Power Sports in Staffordsville. New Kawasaki's for the dirt, the street, or both, and ATVs and side-by-sides for every stage of enthusiast to fish, hunt, haul, or play. And with rebates up to $1,300 and financing as low as 3.99%, it's never been easier to ride it, buy it, and start your next adventure at Kentucky's Power Sports Authority since 1964, M&M Power Sports. Wheel alignments, oil changes, brakes, suspension work, and tires. Thousands of tires by all the major manufacturers, all in stock and at incomparable prices. All backed with 33 years of service and experience, the area's largest tire selection, and six months no interest at Conley's in Paintsville. With a low-rate mortgage from Citizens National Bank, you can downsize your mortgage payment, not your home. New home or refi, Citizens gives you the personal service you deserve. And no gotcha fine print. Just low rates. Stop by your nearest branch to apply today. Citizens National Bank. We take banking personally.
Equal Housing Lender, member FDIC. There's an unlimited selection of new and pre-owned vehicles right at your fingertips with nine acres of inventory and seven different franchises all at one location. Hutch, Chevrolet, Buick, GMC, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram. Call Chevy Buick and GMC at 297-4066 or Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram at 297-5066 where selection, satisfaction, and service after you're sold are all guaranteed. Still a lot of information to squeeze in, beginning with tonight's McGoffin County Farm Bureau sponsored community calendar and a birthday wish or two. The birthday reads, <clears throat> excuse me, the birthday reads a happy 13th. She's a teenager and she's Rachel Gibson for mom, dad, Margaret, Brittany, family, and friends. Happy 13th birthday, Rachel Gibson. And Brianna, from your mom and from your dad and from a whole lot of friends and family, happy birthday to you. Brianna is 11 today. A reminder about the next diabetes education class they'll be talking about. Living with Diabetes from a Family's Approach. It's free, it's open to everyone, and it is tomorrow, 10 a.m. at the McGoffin County Health Department. Recovery Rocks, told you about it yesterday on last night's program. Just a reminder, it's this Saturday in the Ramey Park starting at 2. All sorts of fun and games and prizes and live music and food. And uh, you just got to be there. It's going to be a blast. Recovery Rocks. It's a celebration of recovery. Be sure and join everybody at the Sagersville Ramey Park. Also, you're invited to join the Patricks at their family reunion this Saturday on Cow Creek. The dinner's going to start at 1. For more information, call Larry Patrick at 349-5239. Larry Patrick 5239 for the Patrick family reunion this Saturday at 1 down on Cow Creek. The Sagersville High School class of 74 has got their reunion set for this Saturday at Mike Reed's farm on Cow Creek. I'm going to change in the number in case you need some information. It's Melissa Rudd. She's on Facebook, and she's also reachable at 520-548-0783. It's the Sagersville graduating class of 74. Their reunion this Saturday, 4.30, at the farm once again of Mike Reed on Cow Creek. Also this weekend, a lot happening, including a big horse show, a fun horse show, sponsored by the Elk Creek Free Will Baptist Church. 37 classes. It starts at 5. It is a rain or shine event. Saturday's going to be nice. It's going to be cool, but it's going to be nice. tell you more in a minute. They've got first through fifth places uh, to pay back. They've got more information if you need it by calling 743-2211. It's, again, Saturday at 5 down at the Morgan County Equestrian Park on Liberty Road. And this Sunday, the Stinson United Baptist Church is having an outdoor church service starting at 11 at the Flint Farm on Stinson Creek. It's about 1.2 miles up Route 1090 from the Stinson United Baptist Church house. Dinner is served after the service, the gospel singing after the dinner. Several groups expected to be there and sing. They'd love to have you in attendance if you want to sing or have a gospel group that would like to join them, call 349-3362. Uh, also, if the weather's not suitable, the church service is going to be at the church house at 11. We're not going to worry about that. We'll talk about your forecast in a moment. And a memorial ride that has been set for Trey Aldrich of Allen Central High School, who passed away oh so young, has been moved, I am told. It's set for Saturday the 20th. They'll register at 11. They'll leave the Allen Central High School at 1. Single motorcycle riders, 10 bucks. Couples are $15. And 100% of the proceeds go to Trey's family. And 100% of your announcement can be on the program. That's my best segue there. By simply mailing it, phoning it, emailing it, Facebooking it, however you want to get it to the program, get it to us. We'll get it on air. It's free, and that includes birthdays and anniversaries. One more last announcement this evening, and it comes in loving memory. In loving memory of Deborah Minix Lovely on what would have been her 56th birthday. From Kay, Charlene daughter, granddaughter, grandson, great-grandsons, and brother Paul. And with Lacey at Dance in Prestonsburg and an, an effort to pick up Andrew at five, 
from whatever school event he's got going on. It's a busy life when you got kids, isn't it? This show was taped a little earlier today, but I can tell you local Doppler radars showing a lot of precipitation to the north of Kentucky, but not so much for the viewing area. Uh, we do have some showers and storms tonight, but we don't expect to see them until after 3 a.m. Otherwise, we'll see uh, that low like you saw of around around 70 or so, climbing up to 80 tomorrow. We've got a cold front that is coming through during the overnight. It is going to give us some showers and storms tomorrow. Uh, rainfall amounts right now could be heavy in some isolated areas. Keep that in mind. That's the big change that starts tomorrow and then really changes up by Friday. Now, after the cold front and the showers and the storms are out of here, temperatures are going to settle down to about 71 degrees under partly sunny skies on your Friday, 71 partly sunny on your Saturday. Now, we do have a lingering chance of just some showers Friday night and into your Saturday, but it's 30% uh, might be a bit optimistic. I'm, I'm counting on pretty much a dry weekend as of right now. I'll tell you more about it in another 24 hours or so. But Sunday looks to be mostly sunny, still hovering in the low 70s. We'll start off next week around 75 or so. That's Monday and Tuesday with some sunshine above and mid-70s across the board for the first maybe half of next week or maybe even just a bit more. Now, a couple of more remarks. I'm off to you, Pike, in the morning. We'll see what kind of news I can bring back. And I've mentioned it all week, but Friday is the day that we're going to take a trip down to the pumpkin patch, and I'll have that on Friday's program. That's going to be our hopefully top story of the evening. Maybe everything else will stay calm between now and then. Nevertheless, it's all going to be news that you'll only see with me. Enjoy your Wednesday evening, and I hope to see you back here tomorrow night for more of your news today. As always, a sincere thank you for being a part of the show. And one last thing, and I, I'm leery of mentioning, here's to wishing our country a safe and calm day on tomorrow. That might be something that we'll all include in our prayers this evening as a country uh, and as an entire world, as tomorrow, of course, will mark the anniversary of September the 11th. Hopefully we'll see you here tomorrow night without any any news on that front except for marking that anniversary. With that said, good night.